Hey, John here. Let's talk about stacks. Stacks are a type of container data structure known as a LIFO, a last in, first out. Because the last thing you put into a stack is the first thing you take back out of it. So it essentially reverses the order of things. So conceptually, quite often you'll draw them as a, a kind of a container or a bottle or a jar or something like that. It has a notion of a top and it has operations to add things to it and remove them. The way you add things is you say push. If I wanted to push, say, the number seven into the stack, what that would do is it would conceptually push it in from the top and end up down there. Top of the stack would be seven at that point, all right? If I then push, you know, a 23.12 into the stack, it would go on top of the seven, and the top pointer would be moved up to there. Remember where the top is now. If I posh a third thing, maybe the word hello, it would go on top of the 23.12. And the pointer would move up to say, oh, there's the new top of the stack. It would remember where the top is all the time. So, how do we then remove things? We've put them in there with push. We remove them with pop. So if I say pop, what happens is the element on the top of the stack will be removed. You can assign it to something like maybe x equals pop, right? So that'll have the value now of hello. So it'll pop out in word hello. And part of removing the hello from the stack includes lowering the top pointer back down to the new top of the stack. So then if I said y equals pop, y would then equal the 23.12, because that's what's on the top of the stack right now. It would then remove it, and the new top would be here, which would be the number seven. z equals pop. It would then equal the number seven. Top would say stack is empty. The seven would be removed. If at this point in time you did another pop, that operation would be illegal. The side effects of doing so depends on the situation, the way that stack was created. It would depend on the type of implementation that was used to create the stack structure in the first place. Now let's consider some implementation details. When you create a stack structure using the memory of a computer, the stack can either grow up in memory or down as it fills, right? So let's say this is address zero down here, and maybe you have a memory that whose ends here, that's 64K essentially, right? So let's say we have a stack and it's gonna grow downward, all right? Well, I guess it's easier to discuss upward first. So let's say you have a stack that you want to have grow upward from the bottom address of the machine, right? So the idea is you, you, you declare the top, like I drew before. Maybe there's nothing in the stack yet. Where would the top be? Does it point at zero and say, hey, this is where the next item will go? Then put a value in there. So let's say I push one. Let's say we're only pushing one byte, all right? And if we put a one in our stack like this, top will then point there, okay? Maybe I push a two. Arrow moves up here. Then at address one, we'd store ourselves a two. We had push, you know, three C. Top pointer would move up here to th address two. All right. This is what we call an ascending stack. Just as easily, we could implement a descending stack. All right. Maybe st top starts up here. And maybe the first item goes here, and the second one goes here, and the third one goes here. And when we're done pushing the third one, the top remembers it like that, and it grows downward, okay? If it grows downward like this, every time I do a push, we call that a descending stack. If it grows up from the bottom, it's an ascending stack, all right? No problem, a little terminology there. Now, let's say Does top point at this element here 
after it's been pushed? Or does top point down here at this empty space where the next one will get pushed? How do you implement this, right? This is true whether it goes up or down. So top either points at the top element or at where the next top element would go if there is another push. If the top points as drawn here, it's pointing at this empty spot. And we would call this descending stack an empty descending stack, all right? If, on the other hand, top always points at the last item that was put into the stack, we call that a full descending stack because the top points at the last thing that was filled. And this is true whether it's growing up or down, right? If you have an ascending stack, does top point at the last thing pushed in there, or does it point at the empty spot just above where the last thing was going, all right? So you got a full ascending, full descending. We have an empty descending, an empty ascending stack. Any one of those four kinds will work, and it doesn't really matter which one you choose. It just so happens that a lot of hardware manufacturers implement full descending stacks in their instruction set architecture. All right, so let's take a closer look at an actual stack implementation. A full descending stack, like the one we just talked about, on a big Endian machine. Let's assume we've got some memory addresses that are filled with these values here. This is a small dump from E0 to 10F, okay? These are just some random bytes I put into memory and dumped it out. Now, let's say that our top of stack, the stack pointer, okay? It's common for some CPUs to have a, a dedicated stack pointer register, which is called SP. And let's assume that we have one and it's set to 100 in hex. So it's pointing right here at this 91 right now. If that's the case and I want to do a push of a 32-bit value, a 4-byte value, right? And here's the value we want to push into our stack. What will we do? The first thing we would do is we'd subtract the size of the item that we want to push into our stack from the stack pointer and store it back into the stack pointer. So ask stack pointer minus equals 4 in C, right? So that would leave the stack pointer uh, with the value of FC, which is 100 minus 4. And then we would say write a 32-bit value into memory at the address given in the SP register. You know, this is your store. Store this value into memory at the address in SP. And that you would store in your uh, 102 1A04, what you want to push, okay? And then you're done. So what are you doing? You're pre-decrementing the stack pointer is the point here. So the stack pointer is decremented, then you store, not the other way around. Ultimately, the, the, the results is the stack pointer is left pointing four below where it used to be, and the memory will change from here, E0, E9, 3B, E2, will be updated to the 01021A04 as shown right here. So then it would leave the stack pointer pointing at that 01, okay? So what then would happen if you wanted to pop three 32-bit values out of the stack into these three registers, okay? Well, what would literally happen? We did a pre-decrement in order to do a push. We're going to do a post-increment now as part of a pop operation. So what does it mean to pop something? Well, the stack pointer is actually pointing at the top of the stack right now. It's pointing at the full item right there, okay? So we simply do the opposite of what we did up here. Read four bytes from memory at the address given in the stack pointer register and store them in the A register. And once you're done with that, you have to add four to the stack pointer to move it to the next item that was in the stack buried underneath the one that you just popped out. So a stack pointer is now pointing at this 91. If you then wanted to pop another item out, it would do the exact same thing. It would read from the memory at the stack pointer. It'll get this 91 deb 59 e It would put it in the B register. It would then add four to the stack pointer, leaving the stack pointer point right there, at, which is at address 104. 
If you pop a third time, C would then equal the value that you read out of here. If you again we're reading, we're popping out 32-bit values. So C would then equal this E190D4B5. And because a pop operation does these two things, right? It reads out and then it adds four to the stack pointer, leaving the stack pointer here, which is at 108. Okay. Uh, ultimately leaving the stack pointer, as I said, at 108 and A, B, and C have the values that were read out of the stack. A, of course, was the last thing we pushed in up here, which came out of here, right? And B and C are whatever the heck is in memory at these addresses where the stack pointer was pointing when I executed these pops. So that's all there is to a full descending stack with pushing and popping 32-bit value. Thanks for watching.